Hello guys, I uh, hope you are all okay, you are all enjoying and you are also enjoying practicing ultrasounds. With ultrasound teaching videos, I am Dr. Ashad Nadeem Awan with a new topic that is fallopian tube. As you all know that I have already covered uh, uterus and its different pathologies. I have also covered ovaries with its neoplasm, with its benign conditions and malignant conditions. All has been done and uh, you can see and you can watch all that videos. Today my topic of discussion is fallopian tube. Fallopian tube is very important structure and it needs careful examination. So far transvaginal scan is concerned to some extent you can appreciate that on transvaginal scan and it will appear as a 10 millimeter. But still I would say uh, because of the bowel gases it would become difficult to appreciate fallopian tube. Uh, if fallopian tube is distended by the fluid, then it would be easy to pick on the transvaginal scan. And if it is either surrounded by the fluid, then still you may be able to pick to some extent. But on transabdominal, it would not be easy to pick the, the small tiny structure. On the transvaginal scan, it will appear as an undulated structure up to 10 millimeter and if it is uh, fluid uh, if it is filled with fluid or surrounded by, by fluid you may be able to pick it uh, quite easily so far its pathologies are concerned uh, you can pick certain abnormalities like uh, infection uh, like obstruction like pelvic inflammatory disease if there is any tumor arising from them or uh, there is ectopic pregnancy which is very common I would say here that this is the first more important uh, request uh, from the gynae department to look whether there is some ectopic pregnancy or in other words you would say fallopian tube pregnancy. Diagnosis of asymptomatic hydro uh, self is very important because uh, sometimes it may be mistaken for the simple cyst or complicated cyst or cyst with the septation and instead of following it up it uh, may be mistaken for the management as well so therefore care must be taken because sometimes it mimic as a complex cystic lesion in the adnexal region. So far its uh, different entities are concerned. It depends upon the uh, contents within the fluid. If uh, it is clear fluid or it is uh, simply exu um, transudative fluid so that would be considered as a hydro cell tanks. If it is uh, tinged with blood and it will appear on the ultrasound imaging with low level internal echoes that would be considered as hemosulfanx and, and uh, suppose if it is very thick and with some uh, infectious content and thick contents and fib fibrinous material it would be considered as pyosulfanx and uh, many a time these couple of features may be um, uh, maybe all together you can watch on the ultrasound imaging so hydro um, Pyosulfanx may be there or maybe hematosulfanx would be there. So different entities, it depends upon which type of a fluid and which type of a contents are visible within the lumen of the fallopian tube. So uh, for the better understanding, it's better to watch all these images, look for the different features and how you will appreciate on the ultrasound imaging. Let's start watching these images. This is transvaginal scan and on this transvaginal scan you can appreciate uh, there is uh, ovary visible and underneath the ovary there is uh, tubular structures continuously from one to another side from right to left and forming a U shape. So this is actually hydrocelfinx. Hydrocelfinx on the basis of uh, ultrasound appearance look at there is no internal low level echoes this is cl clear. Uh, transudative fluid within the fallopian tube. Normally fallopian tube you cannot appreciate on the transabdominal scan. For On the transvaginal scan if the tubular structure up to 5 to 8 mm is seen that might likely be fallopian tube. Fallopian tube is only visible when there is fluid within it or fluid around it around the fallopian tube. Uh, always look for the internal contents if there is low level echoes or if there is any debris so this would not be a clear fluid in case of clear fluid this would be called as hydrocelfinx and for the hydrocelfinx there are multiple reasons 
The main reason for the hydrocell things is it would be considered as pelvic inflammatory disease and uh, there would be a lot of sequels including pelvic pain and as I mentioned earlier that most of the time it is related to sexual transmitted disease so you should focus on the gonorrhea and chlamydia infection sometime it would be asymptomatic there will be no symptom at all but in this particular case you can see that there is dilated fallopian tube fluid filled dilated fallopian tube and that is a clear example of hydrocelphinx this is another transvaginal scan it is a close view so to just see everything clearly this is dilated fallopian tube and on dilated fallopian tube you can appreciate this is clear fluid within the uh, fallopian tube so this is again an example of hydrocelphinx one important thing that how you will appreciate this hydrocelphinx is there any radiological signs yes there are three main radiological signs which will indicate you that the fallopian tube is dilated number one is that is called as incomplete septa here in this image you can appreciate incomplete septa thick incomplete septa is a major sign which this one sign is visible on this hydrocelphinx as this fluid is clear so that's why i will use the term hydrocelphinx because it is just the fluid so hydrocelphinx would be applied the second thing is there is incomplete thick septa which indicate that uh, fallopian tube is inflamed uh, the second sign is called as beads on the string uh, if you look in the transverse image, in the transverse image you can appreciate this particular point which is called as a, a beads on string sign which I will show you in the next uh, consecutive slides. These are cross sections of fallopian tube and on this fallopian tube the radiological sign which is called as beads on a string sign is visible. Look at uh, what the main phenomena is behind when the fallopian tube gets inflamed it gets dilated so internal lumen will appear as a beaded form so the mucosal thickening will appear in a focal nodularity this nodularity is considered as uh, uh, it will give rise to a sign of beads on string sign so on this slide bead on string sign is visible this is what uh, the cross section and on the cross section you can appreciate that the uh, fallopian tube is dilated it is fluid filled and it shows beads on string sign again this is an example of hydrocelphinx because the fluid is still clear which has been shown on the previous images that the uh, fallopian tube was dilated with clear fluid so this is another example of the hydrocelphinx and this is the second sign which is called as beads on string sign this is another slide in uh, close view in close up you can appreciate that the fallopian tube is dilated and again there is uh, incomplete septa thickened incomplete septa uh, which is a sign on the feature of dilated uh, fallopian tube and uh, that is inflammation that depict inflammation of the fallopian tube the important point here to look for that is low level internal echoes in the lumen of this fallopian tube you can appreciate small swirling low level internal echoes indicating that there is red blood cell within it and that is a case of hydrocelphin. Hydrocelphin is uh, an entity which indicate that something slightly serious going on uh, it's beyond the level of infection so you may also look for certain uh, uh, carcinomatous condition malignant condition may also be there. The second thing, uh, important thing to look for, sometime this uh, may cause the uh, ovarian vein thrombosis, which is a serious consequences of it. So whenever you come across hematocell things, so look for some serious entity. Always uh, look for the potency of the ovarian vein, whether there is uh, thrombus or whether it is occluded by any ecogenic material or any thrombosis. So this is example of hematocelphinx. Another uh, transvaginal scan for your understanding 
and here you can appreciate that the fallopian tube is dilated it is tortuously dilated with small septa within it and also it's showing beads on string sign as well the important thing to look for is low level internal echoes this uh, fluid is within the lumen no more clear it's mean it is uh, blood and there is hematocrates in it there is rbc in it uh, sometime when small blood cells or red blood cell aggregates to found the to make the clumps it will appear as an ecogenic low level echoes within the lumen so this is an example of hematocelphanx so hematocelphanx as i mentioned there may be certain sequels the one is severe abdominal pain and it may lead to infertility it may also lead to or give rise to uh, ovarian veins thrombosis which is a serious consequences so therefore whenever there is hematocelphanx you must look for the malignant in transformation of either the ovary or around the uterus or in the parametrial region there may be some abnormalities setting over there and the second thing is always look for the potency of the surrounding vein whether these are arcuate veins or these are uh, ovarian plexus or uh, pelvic plexus veins you must have to look for these potency of these veins always use the doppler and to find out whether there is some in uh, whether there is some thrombosis sitting within these veins or not because in case of uh, hematocelphanx there must be some secondary abnormalities sitting over there so this was a clear example of uh, hematocelphanx this slide this is transvaginal slide and with the doppler effects uh, this beautifully explains the presence of low level internal echoes within the lumen of the fallopian tube and this is an example of hydro uh, this is example of hematocelphanx it shows that there is blood within it it shows that bloods are aggregated and it give rise to an echogenic particular pattern that is called as low level echoes so within the lumen you can appreciate low level internal echoes as i mentioned that whenever there is fallopian tube abnormality and uh, there is distension of the fallopian tube due to our secondary to inflammation there will be three signs visible the one is um, incomplete septa which is visible in this slide the second is beats on the string sign which is a particular sign for the inflammation of the fallopian tube and the third thing is cog wheel sign if these multi, if these incomplete septas uh, a presence in a in in a in a multiple form or more than one or two so this will give rise to a cog wheel appearance so multiple incomplete septa will give rise to the form of or the shape of um, cog wheel appearance so these three signs are the signs which are indication of the inflammation of the fallopian tube now the contents of the fluid must be looked if it is clear so you can label it a hydrocelphanx and for the hydrocelphanx this would be due to pelvic inflammatory disease or due to certain other phenomena if it is hematocelphanx though then you must look for any malignant potential you must look for the ovarian vein thrombosis you must look for the um, chronic pelvic inflammatory disease so these three uh, reason should be looked for whenever you come across any hematocelphanx because there will be certain hemorrhagic phenomena sitting over there so this slide was a slide for the for, uh, this this slide was an example of hematocelphanx the next category comes as a pyocelphanx look for this slide this is transvaginal scan and on this transvaginal scan this longitudinal tubular structure is dilated fallopian tube now focus on the intraluminal appearance intraluminally there is increased low level ecogenicity it looks like something thick is filling this uh, this lumen uh, uh, this fallopian tube lumen uh, which is likely to be pus purulent exudate and thickened fibrinous content so this is an example of pyocelphanx whenever there is pyocelphanx it is the indication that this is a pus formation and always look in the surrounding always look for the fallopian tube whether there is any tubo ovarian abscess because ultimately this will lead to tubo ovarian abscess formation 
this will lead to adhesion and this will eventually lead to complicated consequences. The one major consequences is infertility and pelvic inflammatory disease and ectopic gestation. So these would be the outcome of this pyoselfing. On this particular slide, pyoselfing can be easily picked and pyoselfing should be uh, clearly monitored and follow-ups can should be done for that. Beside this, whenever there is pyoselfing, you must focus on the ovary. Is there any ovarian neoplasm sitting there or is there any, in, uh, any abscess formation within the ovary or around the ovary or around the pelvic region or around the uh, fallopian tube? Because in case of uh, pyoselfing, there may be development of the tubo ovarian cyst. It will lead to adhesion as well. Always look for the adhesion. Look for the curly sac fluid contents. Look for the any collection within the curly sac. So these points should always be considered when there is pyoselfing because pyoselfing is an entity which shows that there is some extended infections and there is some purulent infections going on. Mention on the report that the further workup should be looked for inflammatory markers should be done and post therapy follow up scan should be done close follow up it means that within four weeks it's important to be uh, scanned and look for whether this uh, pathology is regressing or this is increasing in amount or this is progressing so that's why a close follow up should be advised if there is a pyoselfing again very beautiful transvaginal slide and on this transvaginal image you can pick that the fallopian tube is enlarged it is uh, it shows a thickened wall which is indicated by the white arrows the walls are thick and also there are incomplete septa uh, beads on the string sign is visible there internal thick uh, contents are there which is, are the indication of pyoselfing like there is some mucinous product within it there is some purulent thick products within the lumen of the fallopian tube so which is indicating that this is uh, pyoselfing one another point worth noting here just adjacent to this structure there is ovary sitting and ovaries are also showing abnormal features like there is something wrong with the ovary parenchyma as well it means this infection is extending beyond the fallopian tube and involving the ovary so this is an example of tubo ovarian mass tubo ovarian abscess so both entities are there so you can label this case as a tubo ovarian abscess because this is the eventually consequence of the pyoselfing when pyoselfing extends beyond the limit it uh, will involve the ovary and it will come rise to adhesion whenever there is adhesion it's a great attractive point for the for the uh, tubal pregnancy for the ectopic pregnancy and second there is a great chance of infertility patient will remain infertile and the third thing as you know that the fallopian tube is uh, lined by ciliated epithelium whenever there is ciliate, ciliated epithelium uh, this will be this inflammatory process will damage the cilia and as a result there will be uh, infertility and this infertility or this whole phenomena will lead to an abnormal consequences so always focus on the reporting Yes, guys, this was all about the fallopian tube abnormality. And uh, have you seen that how much difficult it is to appreciate on the ultrasound imaging because it does not look like it is a fallopian tube or it might be fallopian tube. Uh, in first glance and first instance, it will appreciate as a complex cystic mass and you are likely to confuse with adnexal cell uh, cyst, simple or complex cyst. But this is actually what the fallopian tube look like on the ultrasound imaging. Hope uh, this video would have given you a lot of information regarding uh, fallopian tube abnormalities, regarding hematocelfing and hydrocelfing and pyocelfing. So all these entities have been already discussed. So if in case any doubt or any abnormality you feel, you just drop me a message. I will get back to you. Keep watching my videos. Keep sharing my videos. And with some other 
uh, new topic we'll see each other till then take great care of yourself see you then bye bye